Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Symphony Soundbites. Today I'm with Vintage Lee, yeah. Roxbury, Boston's finest. <laughs> Let's get into it, Vintage. I'm really Let's excited to it. have a conversation with you, get to know awesome. more about you. Thank you. I want to start off by bringing up like some really cool placements you've had. Okay, cool. So cool, your cool. music has been on cool outlets like Euphoria, which mm -hmm. is fire. I love Thank Euphoria. You. Thank you. Me too. Me too. 2K, yes. NBA 2K, yes. fire, to yes, name a yes. few. Okay, cool. Um, how does it feel to see your music show up in those spaces? Like when you saw that, like what's what's the emotion behind it? Um, I just I love the energy. First of all, I, I, I'm gonna keep laughing. <laughs> no, it's gonna be <laughs> too. I'm, I'm giggling too. <laughs> um, it was great. It was a lit experience. Um. It was surreal, honestly. Like I didn't, I didn't never really thought that that could be like, oh, my music's in this or it's in that. So it was just, it was. I was appreciative. It was a blessing, and um, yeah, it's fire. I I hear that. I mean, if I like heard my song, mm -hmm. not that I'm an artist, but if I created something and it was in Euphoria, yeah, that's vibes. Do you feel like vibes. it's affected your creative, not affected, but influenced your creative process at all? Um, no, and yes. Yes, I think maybe because subconsciously as an artist, once that happens for you, maybe you're like, okay, how can I recreate this or something like it so that it can be sought after to be put in these sync placements or, you know. Right. But no, because I'm still just going to make what I make. And right. then I hope that it can get placed or it's a vibe enough that it could fit an X, Y, Z for me. For sure. Yeah. But I mean, it's obviously been because you've gotten a few more places. Yeah, so yeah, I feel yeah. Like that's, yeah, you're on that. You're on that path. Appreciate that. Of course. Fashion also plays a significant role in your yeah. brand. Yep. I peep the IG. Okay. She's putting out the fits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how do they complement each other? You know, the artistry with music and fashion. How do you see them coming together? Um, to be honest, to keep it real with you, like, I don't know how I see them coming together. Okay. I don't. I don't think of it like that. Like super i feel like super artists think about how all that shit connects you feel me like i just like to look good dress good feel good you feel me like dion said and then you're gonna you're gonna play good you're gonna perform good you feel me that's it um well yeah that's how it connects shit you look good you feel good you do good i like that yeah that's important yes. the way you show up in life it's important you know I mean, with that also, do you feel like there's a level of creating an identity mm -hmm. behind the way you're presenting yourself? I mean, look good, feel good, yeah, but like, mm -hmm. do you feel like your identity would have been able to be as like solidified mm -hmm. without having that other aspect of you? Mm -hmm. Like basically without being an artist? Like, yeah, like do, do I you, think that I would still be... Do you feel like if you were an artist, I'm like, I don't know, you wouldn't put it off the fits. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're just like oh. dress. Like do you feel like that would like <laughs> affect the way you, your artistry, your image, your branding? Well, yeah, I definitely think that would affect the artistry and the branding because the imagery is your branding. You feel right. me? Like, I don't know if I was just walking around in like basketball shorts and a t-shirt, you know, like, I think the brand would be a little different, you know? So I think it's important to, I guess, find your swag and let it, hopefully it coexists with your brand. I like that. Yeah. Any like tips or thoughts or the structure behind how you've come about creating your brand? Is it something that just like naturally came about with who you authentically are? Mm -hmm. Or was there any thought behind that? Um, luckily, I feel like it's all been authentically just who I am. Um, Cause like the vintage, vibe like the well my last name is lee my real okay. last name is lee and the vintage vibe came about uh like when i was in like 10th grade or something like that because i was always wearing button downs i was wearing the dress shoes i was wearing the you know the tailored pants you feel me when it wasn't cool people were laughing and shit but i'm like nah this is fly like right. i fly like yep. that's been me i've been doing my own shit so it just translated into the music really so vintage, vintage. does that have something to do with you liking vintage clothing yeah pretty much yeah okay. it. yeah just because at that time i was thrifting a lot i was yeah. just looking into mad old pieces my mom um is a designer she sews crazy shit so i was wearing like her pieces from the 90s i love that so i got a lot of my fashion um inspiration from her so i was just like i was like cool vintage i like vintage and my last name is lee and then people just started calling me vintage so i was like fuck it that's my rap name my first rap name was gonna be goldilocks <laughs> <laughs> Vintage Lee, Goldilocks. <laughs> no, Vintage Goldilocks Lee. <laughs> nah, bro, that was going to be my first rap name was Goldilocks, so, but yeah. So, community seems mm -hmm. to be a thing that you've cultivated really mm -hmm. nicely in Boston, like Grease Feast, that's mm -hmm. super fly. Oh, thank you for doing research. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about how you, like, put that idea together, because, like, you're bringing different worlds together yeah. and you're creating a wave, so. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um. Well, again, I think it's just 
I just put two things together that I like. I really like weed. I like to smoke every day. I like to be high as fuck. And I really like food. Like, I love food. Like, weed and food go hand in hand. So I was like, oh, and I like to cultivate experiences for people. Like, you can come out, you can enjoy, you can leave with something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, memorabilia. So I was like, what can we do for my rollout that will be different? And I came up with Grease Feast. So uh, infuse dinner, get high as fuck, and then after have free weed, free weed infused drink, you know, everything. Um, so that's really how that came together. I want to touch on the aspect of rolling out in a creative way. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of artists out there, a lot of people, a lot of people putting out music. Mm -hmm. What is the thought and why do you feel it's important to find a different way to bring your art about? Because like, you could easily just drop it online and be like, hey, new, yeah, new song, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but yeah. like, there needs to be more with how much with is how happening today. Like, yeah. Tell me about your process. Well, first, uh, when I first started dropping music or I was looking at the music scene, because I'm from Boston, when I was looking at the scene in Boston, I just seen um, people were putting music out with intention, you know? Or it seemed like, okay, I'm putting this out and then a show comes with it. Or I'm putting this out and an event comes with it, you know? That's what it seemed like to me. So I was like, okay, how can I expand upon that? And I think I just started to just take it to the next level. Like rolls out, rollouts are my favorite, favorite, mm. favorite part because it's like we can really show you. We could just do some real life activations and get people outside. I did like a Uno tournament for my um, Draw 2 uh, mixtape. Uh, I did like a activation at the W Hotel, custom drink menu, like four different rooms with different shit that Duh. revolve around Uno and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I just like doing, I really like doing events. And then you said tips. Yeah, I mean, um, you're you're kind of hitting on all of it right okay. now. You're giving the subliminal <laughs> oh, tips. Oh, okay, subliminal like, tips. There's something you okay, want to share. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, tips. I mean, I think I would just figure out uh, what you like to do, what's fun for you, um, and how you can make that something that brings people outside. I like that. Thank you. You've sold out shows. Mm -hmm. You've toured the country. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like if you had not had that experience of bringing it outside of your hometown, mm -hmm. it would have shaped you differently? Yeah, I feel like I discovered a lot because uh, I hadn't really, I left Boston maybe a few times before I like really started making music and um, dropping it. And But before that, I didn't really leave Boston too much, you feel me? So once, I, once that happened for me, I was able to just leave, be out, like... Yeah, it just helped me grow as a person and character development because I'd be in New York for months on end or Atlanta for months on end or LA months on end, you feel me? So I'm just experiencing different things. And so yeah, I think it did. What is the necessity for artists to be authentically themselves to be able to, you know, separate themselves and make a mark? I don't know. I guess you literally just have to be yourself. Like, but how do you get there? Like, cause some people like you, you're just owning like oh, yourself. You. It's thank easy you. for you to be yourself. Like, yeah. it's not for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially as an artist, if you're already not comfortable being yourself, and then you're being an artist, and maybe you're portraying something that's not you. Like, I don't think you're ever gonna get to that space where you're like, oh, I can be myself because you've already put yourself in this position now. So people think this is yourself. So anything other than that won't seem authentic. You feel me? Like, I don't I don't make rock music, but if I want to put a rock album out tomorrow, like, it would sound fire. And people are like, oh, okay, like, cause it's just, I just want, I just did what the fuck I wanted to do, you right. know? Um, so I don't know, you just gotta be yourself. If you can't be yourself, that I, there's no cure for that. Literally, you gotta go back, there's no cure for that. I like that, that was a bar. <laughs> that was a bar, yeah, that's facts. And with being yourself too, like, do you have any suggestions for mm -hmm. artists that mm -hmm. i don't know maybe like are shy or don't know like how to like expose themselves or put themselves out there you know the way they want to like okay. where do you start um uh, i would say find a team but maybe not even a team just surround yourself with people that believe in you you feel me like you might not be the person that can go in the clubs and shake the hand with the dj or you might not be the person that can go up to the radio but your man who parties all the time he could do that mm. your homegirl who knows all the djs she can do that uh i wasn't the type of person that was going into rooms and just being like oh hi i'm vintage hi i'm vintage hi nope i was quiet as fuck and you know i surrounded myself with a team and I let them do that, but that only works for a certain amount of time. Eventually you have to be like, okay, I'm gonna go do it myself. So now I can do it myself, I'm comfortable with that. So that was something I had to struggle with. It doesn't mean, and that was me being myself because I'm not the type to just right. go up and be like, oh, well, you know, like, I, I don't know, like, and I'm very humble. So I'm not about to, you know, 
do you feel like day one when you put music out, mm -hmm. like you were able to connect with your fans the same way that you are today, like having years in doing what you're doing? Um, I would just say, well, yes and no, because <clears throat> when I put my first song out, like, I don't know, the shit just got picked up so fast. And T-Watt, one of my main producers, he hit me up before I even put my first song out and was like, yo, I want to send you a pack. And I was like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, so it was already going before I even put the first song out. So I'm not going to say it changed, but in that aspect, but it changed in terms of like, um, I don't know, it's just like easier to communicate with people. Or it's changed in terms of like I get to see different um, artistic facilities opening up and people working at them, like Sound Lab. Like I don't go there a lot because it's far, but it's dope to see places like that. Like it's a bunch of studios. There's like a photographer. Like it's changed in terms of there's more accessibility. Like you don't have to leave for so much, I guess. I would say that my relationship has changed since then. With that. I like that. Yeah. Your connection. You've been yeah. able to tap in more yeah. with the people who are doing the same thing you're doing. Yeah. That you're able to like bridge, yeah. you know, make yeah, yeah, those yeah. connections yes, that web for sure, for sure. of bringing your art to life. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Thank I you. like that. Yep. Yeah, no, yep. we did that together. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What's a passion or interest of yours that your fans, people listening to you might be surprised to learn? A passion of mine. Um, well, you know, recently I've been thinking about getting back into wood shop. Because, okay. you know, I used to do that in school. I really did like wood shop. Okay. I like building shit. Okay. You know, I thought about that. I'm like, yeah, I do like building shit. You nice. know, what I mean? that was cool. You're going to build like furniture? Um, maybe not like furniture. I'd be on like TikTok sometimes and I'll see like, um, like, you, you know what a stud is? You know what a stud is? Stud. A stud? Yeah. Okay, y'all yeah, be seeing like studs, like okay. white studs, they be at home, like white housewife studs, they be at home and they just yeah. build a quick outside table. Like Shorty built three of them. I said, okay. whoa, like I gotta step it up. Like, you know, like some shit like that. Um, what else? I so don't you're know. trying to like build shit at home? Yeah. Maybe not at home, but I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I am trying to build shit. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't what uh, something that people be surprised at. I like cats a lot. Okay. I have a cat, I really like cats, so I like playing with animals. Yeah. Um, I really like to meditate. Um, I don't know what I do that people would be surprised in, honestly. I, I think uh, those are some, some good things. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Do you feel like that helps shape your worldview at all? I mean, you're mentioning like meditation. Mm -hmm. um, oh, definitely helps shape the worldview for sure. Tell me about it. Um, well, you can like, uh, you can just like manifest your reality if you really, if you really like tap into that side of you. And it also just keeps you calm keeps you grounded but yeah it definitely just helps keep you at peace keep you grounded um it's just good to get through the day with how important is that in the art that you make keeping peace um, staying grounded i would say it's important and not important because okay. if i'm mad i'm gonna make mad music or if i'm sad i'm gonna make sad music and if i'm grounded and happy then great i'm gonna make happy and grounded music so i like i don't care what mood i'm in i'm, I'm, I'm gonna just Existed. make a vibe off that yeah, yeah. That's important. Yeah. I feel like sometimes we just like try to change how we feel mm -hmm. to like adapt to what we think we should be feeling. Oh yeah, I'm not like that, bro. Good like if you. that's how I feel, that's how I am. I'm gonna let you know that's how I feel too. Like I'm I not like, like yeah, I'm not like that. Yeah. 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 That's important. I can learn from that. Anything you want to share with people listening? Anything coming out soon? Anything that people can be expecting from you? Uh, well, any what's, secrets? Any secrets? No, <laughs> I got no got, got, got secrets. But uh, let's see, Grease Pack coming soon. That's my new tape. It's called Grease Pack. Okay. Uh, we got another Grease Feast coming up soon to go with the Grease Pack. I want to go to Grease Feast. You, feel, you should definitely yeah, come to Grease Feast. Yeah, to come to Boston. Pop out. It's definitely going to be a great time. Um, we have the literal Grease Pack, the weed, coming soon. Nice. And, um, She's a businesswoman. Yes, I am a businesswoman. Yeah. And then I um, got Grease Chat. That's my little podcast sit down we smoke weed i put like the first mini episode out already but we got a new season coming up so yeah that's what's to look the fuck forward to my name is vintage i'm from boston thank you